Hi everyone, my name is Steph, this is Kidlet Joy, and today I'm here to review the Song of the Lioness Quartet by Tamara Pierce. This is an early 1980s young adult fantasy series, which if we're putting it in context with contemporary young adult fantasy series, this probably sits very much at the lower end of the YA spectrum, but this was for its time the epitome of YA fantasy and was a series that I read probably in my early teens and absolutely loved and hadn't reread for a very very long time until I saw these beautiful new editions of the book and I just had to pick them up. Song of the Lioness consists of four books. We have Alana the First Adventure, In the Hands of the Goddess, The Woman Who Rides Like a Man and Lioness Rampant. And if you're unfamiliar with this series it is the story of Alana who is at the very start of the series, I think she's 11 years old, she and her twin brother Tom are being sent off to school. Alana is being sent off to a convent to be trained in magic and sorcery because she, she and her brother Tom both have magic and Tom is going to be sent off to the courts to become a page and to train as a knight. And Tom does not want to become a knight, he doesn't like fighting, he is more interested in magic, he wants to be a really powerful sorcerer and Alana is terrified of her magic and wants to become a knight. She doesn't understand why she's being sent off to study when all she wants to do is is fight because that's that's where her passion is. And so the two of them concoct a plan where they switch places and Alana disguises herself as a boy and sets off to court with Coram, who is part of her family's household and supports her in her decision and is there to help and guide her along the way. And so the first book is really the first couple of years of Alana at court at as both a page and a squire. It's about the friendships that she makes with Prince Jonathan, who is the heir to the throne, as well as John's friends, who become her friends, and they all recognise that Alana is a little bit quirky. They know her as Alan, and Alan won't, you know, bathe or swim with them or anything like that, and he's smaller, but he is tenacious and is determined to learn, and so they all rally around her and support her. And by the end of the first book, John actually knows that Alana is a girl, but doesn't say anything to anyone else because they've become such good friends. In the second book, In the Hand of the Goddess, Alana is continuing her training. This is the book up to when she be becomes a full knight. Throughout this book in particular, she and John start a romantic relationship and become quite close. After Alana becomes a knight, she has to reveal that she is actually a woman and she's the first female knight in centuries or whatever. That, like No one can remember the last female knight. And of course, this causes some waves. A big part of the first two books in the series is that John's uncle, the Duke of Conti, is a very, very powerful magical user. He has been bumped off the, you know, the line of the throne because of Jonathan. Alana is always uneasy around him. And that comes to a head in book two, where we finally work out exactly what Roger has been planning. And along the way, there's been a lot of incidences, you know, magical illnesses and things like that, that Alana has had to find herself using the magic that she's so terrified of using to help save her friends. And so by the time we get to this book, she is having to recognize that she might need to have control of both her physical fighting prowess, but also her magical ability. Then the woman who rides like a man is after Alana has become a knight, she decides to leave the court and she goes traveling and she ends up staying with one of the local tribes um, outside of the city. This group is a group of the Bazir and there Alana really get, gets some perspective on everything that's going on. The Bazir have not seen a female fighter in a while and so she is a novelty to them, but she also has this magical ability that is really prized amongst their people. And so she becomes quite integral to this group. It allows her to grow up a little bit more. So in, in sort of the first two books, she's really that young adolescent. In here, she has to grow up and she has to recognize that she has responsibilities beyond just what she thinks of responsibilities of being a knight of the realm is. She recognizes that her relationship with John is actually not helpful and in a lot of ways John has had just made an assumption that they would get married and that she would give up being a knight and, and spend her time with her time with him and that is also part of his growing up process through the story. The majority of the series is told from Alana's perspective. We kind of get other characters every now and then but for the most part you know Alana and John's relationship is actually a friendship and not a, a proper romantic relationship. There is another character, George, who I've not talked about yet, but George is the King of Thieves and has constantly helped Alana and John throughout the series. And he is in his teens when he first, late teens when he first meets Alana and she's, she's quite young. And so nothing ever happens, but as she gets older and as they get to know each other and they begin to trust each other, he makes it known that he, he deeply cares for her but she's not ready at that stage for that relationship. So that, that doesn't happen. The fourth and final book is The Lioness Rampant. And 
In this one, Alana has recognized that she has to return to the court. Jonathan needs her help. Both his parents have died and he's about to take the throne and he needs all of his allies around him. There's also rumors that the Duke of Conti is back and that is causing a lot of issues. And so Alana sets off on this quest to retrieve a magical stone that would help bring more power to Jonathan's rule. And along the way she meets uh, Liam, who is the Shang Dragon, so a very powerful fighter who belongs to a warrior race. And those two have a relationship. Their relationship is also complicated by the fact that they are very different people that have very different beliefs. Alana, by this stage, has come to terms with the fact that she needs to use her magic and that she needs to be able to wield it effectively and efficiently and for the right purpose. Whereas the Shang warriors really don't believe in magic. And so for Liam, that is really hard to reconcile because he has to witness her using her magic often and it just doesn't align with his beliefs. And after Alana retrieves this object, they end up back at the court where they're basically, as Jonathan is crowned, there is a fight that everyone needs to be part of and needs to help resolve. And sort of the, the very last part of the book is Alana recognizing that of, of all, the pe all the relationships she's been in, of all the people that she's cared deeply about, George is actually the person who stood by her and has never tried to change her or tried to mitigate who or what she is and that that's the relationship that she chooses to pursue. I also haven't talked much about her twin brother's storyline in here. Tom becomes a very powerful sorcerer and he returns to court in the third book, the third and fourth book, and a lot of his actions are very much the cause of a lot of the problems in the second half of the series. And so that's also something that Alana has to work through. One of the really interesting things about this series as a young adult series, particularly written in the 80s, is that Alana as a character, as a strong female protagonist in her own series, goes through a lot of relationships. And while it's insinuated that she is having sexual relationships with all of her partners, it's not on page, it's not explicit on page. It's very much, it's just mentioned that they went to bed, they, they went to bed together. But I know a lot of the original critique around the series was that she had so many relationships and it's really interesting because I think this is actually more reflective of traditional teen and young adult into sort of that new adult, new adult category kind of relationships where maybe the first person you meet is not the person that you're actually supposed to end up with. And Alana doesn't really know herself either. She's still learning to trust who she is and who she is around other people. And so it makes sense that she does have multiple relationships and that she is trying to figure out what she wants from a relationship if she even wants one at all. So I don't find that an issue. And I think you are far more likely to find more explicit content in young adult books now than you, than these ever had and probably not necessarily handled in great ways in current contemporary books. Whereas I think it's actually handled fairly deftly in here because of maybe it's just the fantasy setting and the context and the characters and the type of characters that they are. Maybe that helps. As a series, this really stands up over time. The books are over 40, like 40 years old. They really, really stand up. And the writing style is great. These new editions have, you know, I think new author's notes talking about sort of the history of the books and sort of the reception that they had and, and why um, Tamara Pierce made the decisions that she did in the series, which I think is great. But this is a, such a great starting point, particularly for, I mean, I think they're great for anyone, but I think they're really great for young female fantasy readers because you do, you have a, a female protagonist who is just unapologetically herself. She is determined to succeed. She knows what she wants and she is not afraid to, to go after it. And she makes a lot of mistakes and she learns from them. And honestly, I feel like that's a rarity in young adult books anyway. The first book is probably fine to read around grade five, grade six, so 11 or 12. If you're worried about the relationship stuff, maybe just do a scan of them before you give them to kids. But definitely for, you know, from 11 plus, I think these would really work. And I think they're, they're great. So yes, that is my review of the Song of the Lioness Quartet. I'm so glad that I reread it. it, it just honestly brought me so much joy to go back and revisit these characters and just to realize how much I had forgotten about them. I will leave links to all the books down below. So if you want to find out more information, you absolutely can. I would love to know if you have read Tamara Pierce before. Have you read the Alana series or one of her other ones? I know I did read a couple of her other series while I was growing up. I'm not as compelled to go back to those ones. I know some of those are people's favorites, but for me, Alana always stuck out in my head. Maybe it's just that I, I'm, a massive fan of messy but strong female protagonists. But yes, I would love to know if you have read Tamara Pierce, which was your favorite series or who were your favorite characters. Otherwise, feel free to leave a sword emoji to let me know that you're here. I hope that wherever you're on the world, you're staying safe and healthy and I'll see you in my next video. Bye everyone.